morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for BVI Finances uh, Breakfast Forum. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning. I am Elise Donovan, the CEO of BVI Finance. And although we are closing to the second, um, we're closing the second uh, month of the year, many are still making resolutions and charting the course for 2021, trying to understand how we are going to, or how soon we are going to come out of, uh, or in, evolve into a post-pandemic world. Uh, one of the points that we have been stressing here at BVI Finance is the need for us to prepare for the predictable as well as for the unpredictable, whatever happens in a post-pandemic world. And one of the most important uh, points, so the most important things for being prepared is to sharpen our professional skills at all levels of our organization. That's, all, that's personal as well as, as within our organization. And a focus for BVI Finance's strategic plan for 2021 to 2023 is unlocking the human resource potential in our financial services industry. And here today to help us understand how we can up our game and gain an edge as professionals and as organizations is the in institution whose mission is to do just that, the Financial Services Institute. Our topic, developing competency, increasing sustainability, a conversation with the Financial Services Institute. And joining us, to talk about the Financial Services Institute and its work are the director of the Financial Services Institute, director, Dr. Derry Hodge, as well as professional tutor, Davinia McGann. Derry Hodge, Micah, FCG, PhD, is a former professor and dean of workforce training and has over 17 years of experience in academic and professional education. With an interdisciplinary background, he holds degrees in theology, finance, and international business, and a professional diploma in governance, risk, and compliance with distinction. He is a member of the International Compliance Association and a fellow of the Chartered Governance Institute. His role at the FSI involves strategic development and quality assurance of professional courses and training programs tailored for the financial services industry in the BVI. Also joining us is Davinia McGann, and she has taught accountancy for over eight years and has supported thousands of people across the world to obtain success with their professional exams. Davinia completed a degree in financial and business economics at the Royal Holloway University of London before joining the accountancy field. She has qualified as a chartered accountant working with the audit practice and corporate finance with Mazars LLP in Brighton in the United Kingdom. She then joined BPP Professional Education as a tutor in their London office in 2008, teaching audit and professional and financial reporting papers. She has taught students both online and in classrooms across the globe. She has a passion for teaching excellence and has supported the success of several global prize winners in the ACCA examinations an expert in professional training and learning, she understands the needs of students and tutors of professional qualifications. I now welcome Dr. Derry Hodge and Ms. Davinia McGann to open their microphones and have a conversation with us. Uh, we are going to be having a question and answer session after their presentation, and you are feel free to continue to type questions in the Q&A or in the chat room, and we'll be addressing those at the end of the presentation. Dr. Hodge and Ms. McGann, thank you for joining us both. Uh, yes, thank you, Elise, and i um, very delighted to be with you this morning and with your audience. Uh, BVI Finance has been a partner for a long time, and um, 
uh, we look forward to working with you in, as we continue to develop the BVI in terms of the financial services uh, sector. So I'm very happy to have this conversation with you and talk about how we can continue the work of developing competence and the resulting increasing of sustainability. So glad to be here and uh, good morning to the audience. Thank you for joining us. Don't know, do any of you wanna say a brief welcome before I give a quick presentation? Uh, well, actually we've got two presentations. I'll give an overview of what the FSI is about, what we do and our strategy for developing com competence. And then Davinia will uh, focus and zero in on the ACCA qualification and talk about the significance of that um, program for us here in the BVI. But uh, Davinia, feel free, a brief welcome. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Davinia. I'm very happy to be here. And I will be talking to you after Dr. Hodge has set the scene. All right, great. Okay, so, all right, so at least can I go ahead and share screen and move forward? Yeah? All right, perfect. All right, so once again, welcome everyone and um, thank you for joining us. I'm going to give you a brief presentation. All right, good. We see that okay. Yes, we can. All right. Fantastic. All right, good. So just a, a quick bit about the FSI. Uh, I imagine that most folks uh, in the audience know about the FSI, but some may not. So I'll just briefly tell you about us, who we are, what we do. We date way back to 2002. We were launched at that time at a due diligence symposium. Uh, three primary architects, you'll recognize some of the names, Mr. Robert Mathavius, uh, Dr. Michael O'Neill, vice president at the time, later became president, and then a financial services lawyer by the name of Samuel Lohman, uh, based out of Geneva. And so there was a vision to develop an institute on the ground that would provide uh, industry-focused courses and qualifications specifically designed to get locals into the industry. And at that time, the decision was to link it to the college seeing that the college's portfolio involves training for the entire territory. So we are a strategic unit of the college and going on 18 years in existence. And uh, fundamentally our mission, I'll talk more about our mission uh, later on in a couple of slides, but basically what we do is that we support the human resource development needs of the jurisdiction, okay? We are the main, and I might say the most prominent provider of financial services qualifications uh, in the territory. Our strategy is a simple one. We want to engage all levels. So we, at the entry level, we want to get people into the industry. At uh, the middle level, we want to help people progress. And then um, at the master's level, we want to uh, provide uh, opportunities for people who are more experienced. And we also want to address special topics, hot topics, et cetera. I'll talk more about that area uh, more in, in just a minute. Our distinctive is our teachers, okay? So we provide face-to-face -face instruction by expert tutors. All of the qualifications, just about all the qualifications we provide can be studied by distance. But the distinctive of the FSI is you can study a, an internationally, globally recognized qualification with us and have the benefit of an expert tutor uh, to deliver the concepts and also to contextualize them to the BVI jurisdiction. That's who we are. This is our mission statement. Uh, don't get tied up on it. I know it's long, boring. The main thing is uh, two words on their knowledge and skills. Okay, this is the key to developing competency. And we do that through a variety of strategies uh, designed to support the human resource needs of the BVI. But think more in terms of this slide. We like to think of ourselves in this way. Uh, three Ds, uh, develop the skills. We do that by offering financial services related qualifications in conjunction with external course providers. And I'll talk more about the course providers um, in a minute. But this is what we want. There are those industry standard qualifications that uh, persons need if they're gonna be competent 
and we provide those. And then we deliver them. The difference here again is by using qualified professional tutors. And uh, uh, our teachers, tutors can teach. There are a lot of persons who have the industry experience, they're great practitioners, but um, put them in front of the, in a classroom, quite frankly, and they're not able to communicate. At the FSI, it's important that our tutors be able to communicate. So we want to share, disseminate knowledge, explain difficult concepts, help you understand so that you can get the knowledge and skills needed in order to be successful in the industry. Bottom line is support. That's what we're all about. We've been here 18 years and we'll continue to do that going forward. All right, so I wanna spend a bit of time here, okay? So this, this fundamentally is our strategy for developing competence and for increasing sustainability. This is what we want to do, it's what we've been doing. At the entry level, we want to prepare persons for a career within the industry, okay? So this is a time when many people are transitioning out of the tourism sector. Many are considering careers in financial services and FSI plays a role there. And we do that by offering BVI-centric introductory certifications. Uh, three of them, one of them is already in place and there are two others that will be rolled out um, about by summer this year. Uh, there's an introductory certificate in corporate governance that we're working on. There's an introductory certificate in international financial services. And we'll talk more about that at least later on. And then there's also an introduction to compliance. The introduction to compliance is a course that is very popular with us. Nine, we've been offering it now about a, a year and a half. I uh, had 19 persons first offer, 17 after that. It dropped off during the pandemic to about three, now back up to 16. For persons who are wanting a career in compliance, that's the course for them. A complete overview of the BVI regulatory and anti-money laundering regime. And it's been very popular. And a lot of firms have been sending some of their junior level officers you know, uh, to that course. So the entry level, the middle level is also where we focus. And this is about enabling people to progress within the industry. And of course, this is done by offering globally recognized qualifications. I'm sure some of your audience are uh, senior persons, compliance officers in the BVI, and they're very familiar with the uh, FSCs, the commission's approved persons regime. So you're not gonna be able to become and be approved uh, by the FSC as a senior officer within the industry unless uh, you pass or you're, you're designated and deemed to be fit and proper. Part of that process is you having a relevant qualification. In fact, the legislation says specifically you need to have a diploma level qualification in a relevant field. And this is where the FSI comes in. Uh, we enable persons to obtain those qualifications which are recognized by jurisdictions around the world, also recognized by the FSC, and they're necessary in order for you to progress. Uh, there are many persons who are at senior levels now, managing directors, et cetera, that have gone through FSI, taken these qualifications, and as a result have been able to, to progress and move up within the industry. Last is the master's level. Uh, we deal with workshops, uh, seminars, um, uh, specialist programs, et cetera, dealing with hot topics. And we also work with the industry associations and statutory bodies. By the statutory bodies, we're talking primarily here about the commission. We work closely with them to provide uh, special classes for um, the industry. Some of the audience will be familiar with the industry master class that we ran in 2019. Um, this was designed to assist firms that were having compliance challenges and um, very, very successful. So our goal is to engage all levels, uh, help persons get in, uh, help persons progress, and then to provide uh, CPD and different development opportunities for persons who are already in uh, and experience within the industry. Uh, just to give you a sense of who are some of the uh, professional bodies that we work with. These are just a few. 
uh, ICSA, the Governance Institute, the International Compliance Association, ACCA, uh, step qualifications. Uh, we haven't offered step qualifications in uh, a couple of years, but the, the good news is that there's plans to begin that again on um, this summer. Okay, very quickly, I just want to talk about these uh, professional qualifications. Every industry um, has qualifications that are vocational uh, learning opportunities that are focused on industry. Within financial services, there are these membership bodies that provide these qualifications that act as competency standards for persons within the industry. So for example, if you are in the area of compliance, uh, you've got a, a choice there. You can do an ICA qualification or an ACAMS qualification. And having done that, that then becomes a signification or a designation that you have attained a certain level of industry recognized knowledge and skills, and you're supposed to be competent in that area. Okay, so this is what we, we provide. Now, the thing about the uh, globally recognized qualifications, the syllabus content for, for those qualifications tends to be uh, more broad. In most cases, it's focused on UK legislation. And so what our tutors do at FSI is we uh, teach the international syllabus because the exams or the written assignments do need to be focused on the international syllabus, but then we contextualize and apply the syllabus to the BVI jurisdiction. Again, that is our distinctive. And I just wanna make a quick plug for one of our latest ICA offerings. Uh, no doubt many in the audience would have done uh, one of the two ICA diplomas, the Diploma in Anti-Money Laundering or Governance, Risk and Compliance. But there's a brand new uh, diploma by ICA this is the Diploma in Financial Crime Prevention. And just in the context with the pressures that the BVI is facing, we're hoping that this qualification will become um, uh, more popular as time goes on. Forgot to mention, just in terms of our numbers and, and what we do, we're, we are looking at pre-pandemic, we had about 160 persons um, annually that would take FSI courses and do FSI uh, related professional qualifications. Those numbers dropped off a bit as a result of the pandemic, but we're seeing the numbers again begin to climb as we um, move out of the pandemic. All right, now I'm gonna switch over and transition to uh, Davinia, and she's gonna focus and talk about the ACCA qualification, which uh, the whole accountancy area, ACCA, often overlooked, often misunderstood, and people don't really understand the relevance and how that particular uh, program and qualification can be useful. So we thought that we kind of focus on that and especially talk about the entry level programs that we have in place to get people into a career in accountancy. So Davinia, over to you. Thank you, Derry. Good morning, everyone. And, um, Nice to see you, although you get to see me, I don't get to see you. Um, as Derry said, I'm here to talk a little bit more about professional qualifications specifically and what it is that they can do to help you, to help the jurisdiction as a whole. The key here for us is that whether you are starting your career, whether you're looking to progress your career or maybe change your focus, um, you need to set yourselves apart in the same way that the BVI as a jurisdiction is setting itself apart from other international finance centers. You as an individual want to demonstrate your capabilities. A professional qualification is designed to help you build your competence, your experience, your knowledge and your skills in different areas. Now ACCA as a whole, people may say, oh, but the ACCA is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. Um, isn't that just for accountants? Well, in short, no, it's about helping you to become a professional. Now, ACCA did a survey of finance professionals, so across a whole range of different roles across the world, and asked them about what was it that's gonna be affecting the industry and the people who work within it in the future. And they identified five main factors. 
techn technology innovations, uh, an increased need for upskilling, growing regulatory pressures, changing organizational structures and functions, and data opportunities for businesses. Now here within the BVI specifically, two of those are particularly relevant. This increased need for upskilling and the growing regulatory pressures. As an international finance, uh, international finance center, we have a lot of people watching us, seeing what we do, and we are trying to make sure that we are ahead of the other jurisdictions. And to do that, we need to continue to develop, to adapt, not just as an industry, but looking at the individuals within it. By learning, by developing, we're gonna be able to get better at what we do and make ourselves even better. The professional qualifications specifically are designed to help us to do that. ACCA talks specifically about unlocking potential. And part of the FSI's uh, mission, as Dr. Hodges already said, is about helping to unlock the potential of the talent that we have here within the BVI to support the financial services industry as a whole. ACCA says that they aim to develop forward-thinking uh, professionals with the financial and business skills essential for the creation of sustainable economies and flourishing societies. So we're trying to create financial and business professionals. Now, it's more than just about being an accountant. ACCA provides accounting qualifications across a whole range of levels, and I'll explain that, uh, the different entry points in a moment. But accounting isn't just numbers. Accounting is quite literally the language of business. If you can understand accounting, if you have uh, even just a basic level of accounting and finance, you can understand business and it means that you are going to be better at whatever you do. The core within the world is moving away from um, the kind of real discrete specialisms and expecting people to have a general understanding of other areas. So even if you are a lawyer, you need to have a basic understanding of finance. If you're working in compliance and governance, you still need to have an understanding of um, some of the international finance or accounting or law. Everything is blending together and that is what's creating a professional, someone who has a knowledge and a working knowledge and skills across all of the different competencies. You can see this here within uh, this summary of the ACCA qualifications and actually it's not just numbers. You can see here sustainable management accounting, corporate and business reporting, but then we have governance, risk and control, stakeholder relationship management, leadership and management, strategy, technology and innovation. These are all the skills that we would expect of those at the top of their field, no matter what field they are in. And so our professional qualifications and the ACCA help to build that base to enable you to progress. At the core of ACCA, which is particularly relevant for us in an international finance centre, is this idea of ethics and professionalism. So by completing professional qualifications, you are also able to demonstrate not just knowledge and skills in a particular area, but also an understanding and the kind of desire for this ethical conduct. Now, it's becoming more and more important for us to be able to demonstrate and essentially prove our understanding of ethics and professional competence, that we are good at what we do, and that we do it in a good way. People are paying attention to not just how much money businesses are making, but how they are making that money. So for example, within the ACCA qualification, all students complete an ethics and professionalism module. That doesn't matter whether you are starting with the level two diploma down at the bottom, or you progress through the full ACCA qualification, which takes you up to an equivalent of masters, of a masters. Um, you're having to actually prove and then you can then prove to the rest of the world, to your employer, to potential employers, that you have an understanding of ethics professions and what it does. So for example, um, your personal effectiveness, making you better at what you do, as well as law and regulation and professionalism as a whole. So why ACCA? As I've said, professional qualifications help you to build your competence. ACCA, although it's about accounting qualifications, is not just about creating accountants. It's about creating business professionals, people who understand the financial services industry, who understand business and can speak the language of business, can translate 
what's going on in a particular sector or particular industry and make it relevant to what they see to their clients, to their employer, whoever it happens to be that they are engaging with. So we are going to be offering a range of ACCA qualifications because we want to try to help to create these forward thinking finance professionals, building that level of competence within the BVI jurisdiction and giving people a globally recognized qualification that they can use to progress no matter what industry, what role, uh, what sector it is that they want to be working in. So it offers an awful lot of flexibility. We're going to be starting off in April, so next month, offering the ACCA Level 2 Diploma. So this is an entry level qualification. It is in accounting. As I said, it's not just about numbers, although at this level, this is where you are starting to learn the basics of the language of finance. And it's a qualification that's made up of two uh, exams and one online module, the Foundation in Professionalism that I've mentioned. The great thing about this qualification is that it's open entry. So you don't need to have a certain level of experience or expertise. If you are brand new to financial services, brand new to finance, if you have been in the industry for years, but never actually got an official qualification, this can be appropriate for you. You would work through uh, financial transactions is the starting point. So understanding the finances that a business will see, um, the basic transactions that they will be undertaking and understanding the role of management information because accounting generally, as I said, the language of business is about providing information and understanding that information. So looking at the role of management within an organization and the information that they will want to help them to make decisions and ultimately to make better decisions. You will be working through um, the program as a whole with an expert tutor here in the BBI. You get access to online support, online resources, so that you're building your um, technological and kind of digital skills, as well as your professional competencies. And it means that by the end of the year, you can have achieved a level two internationally recognized diploma in financial and management accounting right here in the BBI. Um, I'm not sure where we are with questions Elise um, but now is probably a good time for me to hand back to you so we can try and focus on whatever it is that other people want to ask about. Okay um, thank you both for those uh, presentations and uh, giving us more, more knowledge. Um, both of you talk about the accessibility of of these courses to people who are entry level, who are coming perhaps from different fields. As, as we know, there's been a lot of retrenchment, uh, particularly in the tourism industry. And I know that we have people who have come from the tourism industry, you know, many years ago, whether they were in diving or in, in the marine sector, and now they are top level professionals at the decision-making level, the C-suite level at the top tier of our financial services industry, and not just in the BVI, at the global level. And they have been able to move up that trajectory uh, because there, there was uh, courses that are available at the Financial Services Institute. So can you let us know or give us um, uh, examples or, or understanding of how people who are perhaps retrenched um, from the tourism or other industries and can find opportunities in the financial services industry. Because one of the things that we realize is the financial services industry has been resilient. It has remained steadfast. People have been employed. They have not been let go. And businesses, in, in some respects, are flourishing in, in the financial services industry. So it is an industry that people should be looking at very closely to get into. And, um, you know, not just in, in corporations, but they're all sectors, they're all facets of the financial services industry. So can you tell us more about that and how people can enter? Right. Okay. So, um, well, is it simple? as simple as contacting us, getting to the website, calling us, et cetera, and we can discuss um, options. For 
a lot of persons, quite frankly, the issue has often been price because the professional qualifications are, are expensive. Uh, you're looking at the lowest level ICA qualification is 2750. They can go up to 5,000 and um, the ICSA qualifications, ACCA are similar. What we've done with our entry level BVI centric certifications is that we've tried to make them as inexpensive as possible. All of them are under a thousand dollars. Some will be as cheap as $500. So um, if a person is going to apply for a job within the industry, the employer is gonna to want to know um, what do they know, okay? And this is where FSI can help with our introductory uh, courses and certifications. I'll tell you just a little bit about a brand new course that, uh, well, there's already the introduction to compliance. And if someone is wanting to get into a, an entry level position, a junior position in compliance, that course is key, okay? Because they need to understand uh, the competent authorities, the relevant legislation, uh, the whole process of CDD, um, um, enhanced due diligence, et cetera, and all those AML related processes, terms and concepts are important. I've heard of some employers even uh, setting up tests to see what persons do with respect to um, customer due diligence. And so we cover all of that in, for example, our introduction to compliance course. But we have another course. Now, at least keep in mind for a long time, we focused on the middle level and helping people progress. But in more recent years, we have been um, also focusing on entry level. One of the things that we've needed and we now have, and we're hoping to launch it in May, is a what we could call an overview course. It's called Introduction to International Financial Services BVI Jurisdiction. Uh, it's already been written. The content is available. It's going through a review process right now involving um, some of our industry partners. Uh, and all of the introductory courses that we create for industry, we always involve industry practitioners in the review process. And so we're very grateful for um, uh, some of our friends who volunteer to look at the course materials and give us feedback in terms of accuracy and fitness for purpose and things of this nature. But this new course, and I'll, I'll show you the, the right here. It, this is the full content, fresh, hot off the press. We outsource the writing of it to um, a fellow by the name of Robin McGee. And Robin is a, a former, well, he still teaches STEP qualifications. He's a course writer for STEP. And so he's a professional at writing courses. And so we linked Robin to a group of, of a feedback team on the ground. And so as he developed the course content, there were persons who were practitioners in the industry who he could draw on to make sure that in the design and development stage, it was fit for purpose, All right? Now that it's been written, we have a different team that's working with us to make sure it's fit for purpose. Four units, at least within that, um, that course. Uh, unit one is an overview of what is an IFC, what an IFC does, and the whole offshore business environment. Unit two focuses on the products and services, primarily trust offerings and um, business companies. And then there's a third unit that focuses on the whole issue of regulation. And very important, there's a fourth unit that talks about employability factors. So this unit will talk about the different roles that are available within the industry but then also the kind of uh, skills that are needed to be successful. And we talk about transferable skills, such as um, communication skills, speaking, uh, writing. Uh, initiative is one of the things that we talk about, um, teamwork, leadership, et cetera. And we talk about those things and we have persons do some very practical exercises designed to develop these skills and to prepare them 
to be successful in an entry role. So we're very excited about that. It's been a long time in the making. And the good news, Elise, is that we're pitching it at about six to seven hundred dollars. And we do offer payment plans for all of our courses. This one will have a two-part payment plan. You pay uh, 300 or 350 at the beginning. And then um, in the middle of the course, you pay the balance. Seven weeks, so it's short, high impact, but it's designed to give you a, a, a what we call a sound overview of what the industry is all about. All right, so those are the kinds of um, tools, if you will, that we're using for persons who are interested in making the transition from another area such as tourism and going into financial services. Okay, thank you, Derry. Um, we have two questions from our audience and, and you said that the person who prepared this, um, this, this program that you're introducing is actually someone who has worked with STEP. So we have a, a question from Charlene um, and she said, excellent presentation. Um, with respect to STEP, what courses will be offered this summer? Start date, duration, cost, online option study? <laughs> yes. All right. So, uh, yes, it's been about, wow, well, nearly about four years since we have offered STEP qualifications. Uh, part of the problem, and this is going to be an appeal to some of your audience members, is finding an appropriate tutor. So step qualifications are offered through uh, a training organization called Central Law Training. So they're the contracted official training provider for all the step qualification. FSI was a partner with Central Law Training and part of that partnership involved having an approved tutor on the ground to deliver the step um, courses. Now, uh, just to give you a quick overview about, about STEP, uh, I mean, they offer a variety of, of courses and qualifications, but uh, primarily of interest for us, there was a STEP foundation certificate. And then on the road to becoming a trust and estate practitioner, there were four papers that one had to take, a trust creation paper, a company law and practice paper, an investment appraisal paper, and an accounts appraisal paper. Uh, FSI was approved to offer the foundation certificate and two of the diploma papers, the trust creation paper and the company law and practice paper. But the approval is based upon having a approved tutor. And there is a process that the tutor has to go through in order to be approved by central law training. And um, um, we've, we, in the past, we've had persons approved but we have been trying to locate on the ground a TEP uh, step approved person that will be willing to go through the process of becoming approved to deliver the step quals. That, that's been the issue trying to get the right person. Now, good news in that regard. Okay, so the internet and remote delivery has changed all of that. We no longer need to have somebody here on the ground. That would be my question. <laughs> yes, we can now have the courses delivered by someone in UK, Bahamas or any other jurisdiction. So we've been in touch with central law training and been having conversations with them. They've changed up the framework of the STEP um, diploma and they're rolling it out in a different way, a different curriculum, but they've given us the assurance that we will again be approved for delivery. And if there's nobody on the ground that's able to deliver, we'll be able to deliver um, remotely beginning this summer. So I would say to the person, stay tuned, um, visit our website if you're not on our mailing list. So you get updates, uh, please uh, email us and we'll put you on that list. And we'll have more information about that coming out very soon. So um, just in terms of, of benchmark industry qualifications, yes, uh, STEP has been gold standard and ICSA has been gold standard also. So in the absence of us having the STEP quals, we've shifted and focused more on ICSA qualifications 
particularly their level four and level five, uh, the level four certificate and their level four diploma is, is in many ways um, a, on par, if you will, with the STEP diploma. So there's still been options from ICSA, even though the um, STEP diploma has not been available for a while. Okay, um, and she also asked about the cost. Do you have an estimate for the cost? Yes, okay, so in the past, uh, the STEP certificate was as high as 3,300, and we would enable uh, a three-part payment plan, 1,100 at registration, and then 1,100 again, at two additional intervals. I'm not sure of the cost. It's not gonna be any higher than that. We aim to get it lower than that. And um, we're very conscious of the fact that price has been a factor that has made many of the, the international qualifications uh, out of reach for many. Okay, so we're working on that. We talk to our uh, partners internationally about that all the time. We'll try to keep the price down as low as possible. I imagine, don't hold me to it, you're looking at in the range of $2,500. Yeah, and you've also been talking with the banks about setting up student loan program. <laughs> uh, yes, the, ongoes, uh, the discussions are ongoing in that area. Yes, yeah. But um, yeah, at least we, we have really tried to work with our students as much as possible. In some instances, we have up to a five part payment plan and we allow persons to go, go through the bulk of a course and then complete their installment payments just before the course ends. We never want to have anything beyond the ending of the course where we've had some problems in that area, but we try to stretch it out as much as possible to make it um, uh, attainable for persons. Yeah, because it, it is important, it is important at least because as we said, if you're gonna move up and become approved, you've got to go through the FSC's fit and proper and, uh, um, approval regime. And there are academic requirements that they're looking for in, as part of the approval process. Well, the, the greatest investment you can make is an investment in yourself um, and your you know, professional development. The other question comes from Carrie and she's asking, um, has there been a slow uh, in candidates registering with the FSI for courses during the pandemic, which you said, um, yes. and what has the FSI done to support candidates during the pandemic? Yes. Okay, so I can speak to that, but I'm talking a bit, so I'll let Davinia say something and then I'll say, say something else. Davinia, yeah. Okay. There we go. Um, thank you for your question, Kerry. Yes, we have seen a fall um, in student numbers, sadly. It was to be expected. However, we've been really lucky in that we've been able to continue to support the students that are um, still wanting to study. So for example, last year when the pandemic happened, we managed to take all of our tuition online um, within a week, pretty much. So we were able to continue delivering, to continue to support our students. Um, in amongst everything else. We've also ensured that when we've been delivering online, we were making recordings available because we knew that there were extra pressures on our students to juggle homeworking, uh, you know, supporting the, the children who are homeschooling where relevant and still wanting to continue their professional development. So we really worked to help um, provide a more flexible structure for our students. And that's continued on um, with uh, us being able to actually expand the range of resources that we're using to support our students for a number of our courses. Um, we recognize that that flexibility is something that's really important to people when they are juggling uh, studying and maintaining a, you know, a full-time professional role and all the other pressures that we have been facing in the new normal. In terms of what we're gonna be doing going forward, as, as Dr. Hodge has mentioned, we're looking at um, pricing and payment plans with the ACCA program, for example, I'm actually going to be making a very exciting announcement in a webinar tomorrow in relation to a scholarship 
for ACCA because we're trying to help more people to get involved. We've done all we can to get the price of our programs as a whole down as well. Um, and we hope that going forward, we're gonna be able to continue to offer, as Dr. Hodge said, these, these entry level qualifications to help more people get involved and upskill and to be able to demonstrate to employers that they are you know, interested in developing themselves. As Elise says, it's you know, the best investment you can make so that they are then able to, you know, hopefully look for additional roles um, or progress generally and then get a return on that investment that they're making. Um, so I hope that answers your question, but I'll pass back to Virginia, Dr. Can you give us a scoop? What's the announcement you're going to be making tomorrow? <laughs> um, well, I'm making, uh, um, there's a webinar tomorrow morning at 9am that we are delivering specifically about the level two diploma going into a little bit more detail about how it works, what's happening. Um, and we are going to be launching um, or opening applications for a full scholarship for that level two diploma. Um, so if people are interested or ideally know people who are interested, who um, potentially are facing uh, cost as the, the biggest barrier, they're gonna have an opportunity to do that level two diploma. Um, as I said, with a full scholarship completely supported by FSI. Um, but I will say that I'll need to log on tomorrow and keep a look out on social media for the updates and all the details of how to apply for that. Is that one scholarship or is that a scholarship for anyone who qualifies would be able to apply for the scholarship? Is it more than one or is it just one scholarship? At this time, we only have one, sadly, um, but we are looking at options going forward on trying to make things as accessible as we can. So we hope there will be more um, to come in future. Um, do you have a list of the courses, full listing of courses that if you don't have it to put up, uh, Helen is asking, um, and then maybe you can um, email it to us and we'll send it out. Right, yes. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is to go to, I think there, it's, it should be on screen, fsibbi.com. And right on the main page, there's spring 2021 course schedule, a uh, PDF document there that it gives a full listing of all the courses. So remember, we're doing multiple things. Courses and qualifications are, are one. I, could, I would say that's the main thing. And you can always see that what's currently on offer at the website. Just um, if I could go quickly back to the question in terms of what has happened pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, et cetera. Yeah, pre-pandemic, um, I would say we were doing good, just like you know, a lot of organizations would say we were doing well. I mean, we're a small jurisdiction, yes, but uh, we offered two semesters for our courses. There's a spring, uh, summer semester, and then there's a fall, winter semester. We were averaging uh, between 70 to 80 persons each semester. Yeah, so that, that's just studying the professional qualification. So that's about 160 persons, which, which is good news to think that there are 160 persons that are going through uh, professional qualifications um, with the FSI. And this doesn't include those who study by distance because for the majority of qualifications, you can study them by distance. You won't get an expert FSI tutor to break it down and help you pass, just to put that plug in, but, but you can um, study it by distance. 160 persons uh, typically a year, but we saw a significant drop off to around 45, 50 persons in the semester, uh, right as the uh, pandemic began. But we're seeing those numbers go up again. Okay, and one of the adjustments we made, just like everybody else, we, uh, as Davinia mentioned, we switched entirely to online delivery. Uh, we invested in Adobe Connect meetings, which is very similar to Zoom. We know there are a lot of platforms out there, Zoom, uh, Cisco Teams, etc. We searched, we did our investigation, and uh, we found that Adobe Connect works well for us, especially for those who are involved in a lot of teaching. So we use that, switched entirely online, and there's been kind of mixed feelings. Some students loved it, some students don't love it, et cetera, but the access was still there, okay? Now that things are lightening up a bit, uh, we're back in the classroom, 
but we still have that option open for persons who want to do um, remote and want to log into a class or persons who uh, want to attend the face-to-face. -face. Perhaps, Davinia, you could tell very quickly about what has been the reaction of, because I know for one of your ACCA classes, you gave them the option, we can do it online or we could do it in class. Okay. Yeah, um, the great thing that we have is that being, you know, in a small jurisdiction, we really do try to, to work around the needs of our students specifically. And this semester, for example, the programs that I've been teaching, all of the students were on island and, you know, in various different places. And we said, well, you know, we're looking to go back to face to face. Is that something that you would appreciate or not? And actually, um, I've been very lucky. My students wanted to come back in the classroom, which I have absolutely loved. And it's been great because you've actually been able to... <laughs> It sounds a little bit strange but to say, but that opportunity to study, to have that time for themselves away from work, away from their families, and just to focus on learning has actually given them a sense of space and potentially the ability to, to focus, which I think has been um, a welcome change from having everything, uh, living at work, working at home conundrum that a lot of us had to face last year. Um, a number of our other programs, we have students who are not on island, and they are you know, currently either elsewhere outside um, the territory or actually we're never in the territory, but are still enrolling in our programs because we were offering them online. So we've been able to continue to offer those online, but then still have the option for that kind of local tutor support, whether it by phone calls or coffee meetings um, to offer that kind of local support as well. So we've, we, we really do try to, to work around uh, what's going to work best for our students to give them the support that they need with their studies overall. Okay, I have um, a, a question from, from the participants. <laughs> and if, can I qualify to do a level two courses if I haven't done, I, I guess, the prerequisites? So can you just do a, a level two on entry level without any prerequisites? Yeah, so I assume she's speaking about the level two diploma ACCA. So Davinia, that one over to you. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. The great thing about the ACCA program is that they have what they call an open entry access policy. So you have the traditional route into the chartered qualification, which requires um, a bachelor's level degree and uh, a certain level of kind of knowledge and experience, education and experience. But they also have the foundations program, which is the one that we are focusing on and going to be starting next month. What that means is that you can enter with zero previous experience, zero educational backgrounds. They recognize that for various reasons, sometimes people have not had the opportunity to get um, kind of proof of educational achievement. And they don't believe that should be any kind of barrier. So as long as you are focused, determined and willing to put in the work, anyone is able to begin. And that's true, not just of the ACCA level two diploma that we're offering, but is also true of our introduction programs that Derry was talking about. We're very much trying to ensure that anyone who has the desire, um, the ambition to, to get a professional qualification has an option to come in and to prove themselves in terms of what they're doing. Okay. Um... Someone has mentioned that they don't see the courses that Davinia, you mentioned on online. So they've checked. So maybe you may want to, to look at that. But in terms of being online, and you said you have students outside the jurisdiction, um, Derry, are you now trying to position the FSI as a regional uh, institute? Because we, we know that um, financial services is, is very important to the BVI and we are a premier international finance center. And I think we more so than many other jurisdictions in the region, particularly in the Eastern Caribbean, do not have financial services and are there are others looking to get into to financial services. So are you positioning the FSI as a regional institute to offer those courses to people in, throughout the region? Yeah. The, the answer to that is absolutely yes. And this is one of, I guess, 
a side effect of the pandemic. It has opened up the world of remote access and online learning. Yeah, and we know that's been the case for um, primary schools, secondary schools, and it has opened that opportunity up um, for us. Specifically, we're about to do that with our ACCA qualifications. We're in the process of finalizing a partnership with an organization um, in UK called First Intuition Learning Solutions. First Intuition Learning Solutions is a tuition provider just like um, FSI. But one of the things that they've done is that they've developed a, a vast online library for ICSA and ACCA qualifications. And they've reached out to us and have, um, are, have very much interested in partnering with us and being their regional agent. Now, what that does for us is that it offers and provides our students access to that online library. The online library has um, pre-recorded lectures, um, professionally written course notes, um, practice exams and mock exams, study texts, et cetera. And um, through that partnership, we're about to go regional in terms of ACCA and ICSA qualifications. And there are gonna be a variety of options as to how that a person can do that regionally. One, if they're interested in studying uh, independently and being self-paced, we'll give them access just to the online library. If they're interested in learning, being self-paced, and they want to have a link to a tutor, by email for questions and for support. Um, in some cases, the tutor will mark a mock exam for them in order to help them prepare. That's another option. So there's the independent self-paced, just the online resources, there's tutor support. And then there's also the live access to where they can tune in to one of our classes that's being delivered entirely online or in the classroom, because we do have the capacity now to offer uh, a face-to-face -face class with students there and have someone log into that face-to-face -face class and participate in that class. Yeah, so yes, um, we are there and we're about to launch that in a very big way, yeah? Well, you, so you do the, the hybrid options, so we'll be, you'll be doing online as well as face-to-face, -face, which has been one of your your premium um, in terms of That's right. Uh, right. the you know the global pandemic has really impacted uh, we've seen industries dissolve as well as we've seen industry grow and one of the industries that has grown over um, the, the last year and grown by you know significant leaps and bounds is financial technology and uh, fintech. As, as we call it, um, by 45% and even more in, in some instances, like the platform that we are on. We hadn't yep. been, weren't using this platform before the pandemic. So the pandemic has certainly um, you know, accelerated our, our digital transformation. Uh, what is the FSI doing to bring the BVI financial services in industry in line with uh, financial technologies and to help us accelerate or leapfrog into that yeah. arena. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so I, I mean, our whole thing has been globally recognized qualifications and development opportunities for industry. That's what we do, that's what we've been doing, we'll continue to do that. But there is the recognition that um, times are changing, okay? And there's a need to diversify the economy Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And um, at least you know this, and you know this well because we're working in partnership with you on a very special project to um, commence and launch a special fintech course. Okay, and we're working with uh, Professor Keith Carter at the um, National University of Singapore. Uh, we've been having discussions with him um, for the past couple of weeks. And we're putting together a framework to launch a very special course for a bunch of special people who are serious, who are committed, 
and are very much interested in learning and becoming pioneers in the area of fintech, right? It's gonna be a pricey course and you know we'll talk about that, but it is designed for to, to develop a cadre of persons who understand the area and then can become um, architects to help the rest of us in the community get into that area. So it, it is a project that is going to be coming on stream very, very soon. And we're very grateful to um, the uh, National University of, of Singapore. And by the way, the BVI government has an MOU in place with the National University of Singapore um, to develop um, this area of FinTech. And we're excited to be able to bring in this course. It's new for us because like I said, we've been focusing on you know, the industry qualifications for so long, but there's a recognition that we need to diversify. Yeah. Yes. There's so much discussion going on about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency yeah. in our financial services industry and it's happening. And of course we have the, um, the regulatory FinTech sandbox, which was yeah. launched in August. So we have to have the complement of, of services, the whole scale yeah. of services that will help us to grow um, globally as well in, in that arena. Uh, yeah. I don't, I, I think we have one more question from the audience. Um, okay, uh, Carrie's very excited about the FinTech course offering. So we need to get that on stream uh, soon. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're having those dis those discussions, Elise, and uh, as you know, there's a 12-hour difference. So we've been having discussions with Professor Carter, Professor Phil. They're excited. They already have a framework in place. Um, pricing is one of the issues because we're, again, trying to make it as inexpensive as possible. There will be a, a interviewing and application process involved. And um, you have to be, be very serious and be willing to, to study. Um, there are some, some prerequisite competency requirements, uh, nothing astronomical that, you know, you don't need to be a, a rocket scientist, but you do need to have some competencies already in place. Okay, but we're excited about that. So it's, it's developing. The challenge there is there's a 12 hour difference. So it's either they're getting up early, 6.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, or um, they're staying up late, et cetera. And so anybody that takes that course is gonna have to be willing to make adjustments in terms of their scheduling and when the course is gonna be delivered because it will be delivered by Professor Carter or Professor um, Phil um, by Zoom to participants in the BVI. Yeah? But we're excited about it. Yes, we're very excited about that. Uh, any more questions from our participants? I still see we still have a full complement of participants online. Um, so if you have any more questions for uh, Derry or Davinia, um, please feel free to, to ask those questions. But in the meantime, um, I guess a question that, that I have is that, you, you talk about um, that you're gaining, you know, more and more, more interest. How supportive has the industry, the organizations, the um, law firms, the uh, corporate service providers, how supportive have they been of the Financial Services Institute? Are they uh, feeding um, staff or employees into the Institute? How supportive have they been? Yeah, yeah, generally I would say very supportive, okay? And I say that with all confidence. Uh, there are some that are more supportive than others. Um, you know, we have firms that will send uh, multiple candidates um, on a course. Um, others may send one, you know, every year, every other year, okay? But um, I would say that the firms that are progressive, that are serious about their talent, that recognize the importance of having people that are properly trained, properly equipped, uh, they've been supportive. I, I wrote an article with um, Raj Krishnan for the STEP Journal a couple years ago about 
development and training within IFCs. And there for a long time, there's been this, what we call a factory model with high level persons at the top of few, and then down below got a bunch of low level persons that are doing assembly line factory type work. And those uh, lower level persons just are doing basic uh, paper pushing tasks. And a lot of firms for a long time have structured their company in that way. And we've argued that that's not the most effective way, okay? And what we said is that, look, if you're gonna be progressive, you're gonna be developed, you need to make sure persons at all level have an understanding of the big picture of what the organization does, okay? And so um, you need persons for at the junior level, the middle level, et cetera, it's better for them to have an understanding of um, the overall process of the organization because what that does is that it drives innovation because it gives them an opportunity to be able to um, respond to customers in intelligent and ways that uh, can help to improve your, the, the quality of, of your service and the quality of your products. So I like to think of that in terms of the model that the Japanese have used in manufacturing way back there, Kaizen and quality control. Uh, quality improvement models where they were, were training and developing their factory line workers and those factory line workers because they had that understanding of, of their role and how their role fits into the big picture they were able to come up with innovations and with ideas for how they could improve the factory uh, development process and so they were a part of creating tools making processes more efficient, et cetera, which led to the overall improvement of the quality of the organization. And so basically that's what we want to do here in the BBI, excuse me, my phone here ringing in the background. It is important that persons at that lower level have that knowledge and understanding of the industry so that they too can help to drive innovation and the development of our service. Okay, um, Kalinda says you need to bring Raj back. He was amazing. <laughs> I knew when I mentioned his name, somebody would say that. <laughs> okay, so are you working on bringing Raj back? <laughs> Raj is available by distance. So okay. this is the miracle of the internet, yeah? <laughs> so he'll, he'll, he'll be available to do some, some distance work. Uh, this has certainly been an interesting um, conversation, and I, I think it's one of the important things for us at BVI Finance. We are really putting a, a premium on making sure that the industry as a whole knows that it is important to invest in your human resource um, and to grow that potential, because if you don't grow yourself, then the organization will not grow and then the jurisdiction will not grow. So, and I know the government has also emphasized uh, about making sure that there's more locals um, growing up in the industry or growing up in, in any industry. Uh, we know 60, about 66% of the financial services industry is already locals, but we also want to see more, more people um, grow and, and, and transcend to, to higher levels within uh, the industry. And you have the opportunity or you have the platform that provides the opportunity that allows people to, to grow up in the industry. You can take them from, you know, I've met people in the industry who said, I was a messenger. I took all these courses, you know, I went to school and now, you know, I'm somebody important in the industry. So, uh, I'm going to let Dr. Hodge, Derry, and Davinia um, have the last words um, before we sign off. Yeah, okay, so I'll have Davinia to share and then I'll say a few closing remarks. Please, Davinia. Thank you, Elise. Um, I think the purpose of this webinar, we were talking about building competence and sustainability. Ultimately, when you're looking at professional qualifications, just as Elisa said, it's an investment in yourself. As a firm, it's an investment in your staff. You're able to demonstrate transferable skills, as Derry talked about before, 
a professional qualification isn't knowledge it's using knowledge applying knowledge that's exactly what you have to do on a day-to-day basis when you're dealing with your clients you're better able to communicate you're better able to understand what's being asked of you because you're having to understand the questions that are being asked and respond to them efficiently you're having to prioritize you're having to manage your time these are all the skills that we are looking for in professionals that you are able to demonstrate we've had a number of students starting um, you know with the lower level qualifications and then have been able to change roles change industries and progress because they've been able to evidence what it is that they're able to do but they've also been able to build their own confidence in their own abilities which is a key part Um, from a firm's perspective the worry is always you know times are hard finances are hard and people are struggling is you know what if I invest in my staff if I pay for my staff to do this training and then they leave but Henry Ford, who I'm sure most of us will have heard of, having created uh, you know, one of the largest motor, com- uh, motor vehicle companies in the world, his response was, but if you don't invest in training your staff and then they stay, what are you going to do? So that's the thought I'm going to leave you with and hand back over to Terry. Yeah, OK, so thank you, uh, Davinia. Yeah, OK, it's, as Davinia said, OK, times are, are challenging and organizations are cutting budgets and looking for ways to become more efficient and economical, et cetera. And uh, what I found is one of the favorite uh, or more, most likely places to cut has been the training budget because they look at, hey, look, we just can't afford to train persons right now because finances are tight. Now, what I would say to that is you can't afford not to train persons right now because finances are tight, because training is hopefully going to help you get the most out of that employees. The employee is gonna be better equipped, uh, more efficient. They can do more, produce more, et cetera. And they can respond to changes, you see? So this is what you want. This is not a time to be, uh, speaking as an educator, I, obviously I'm biased, but Speaking from a business point of view, yeah, the training budget doesn't need to be cut at this point. In fact, there's an argument that says the training budget needs to be a greater investment now in order to make sure that our people are ready for the changes that are uh, upon us, being forced upon us in some cases, and that are just happening because of changes in the environment. So this is where the FSI has been and will continue to be available. Um, on island to support and to assist you with your training needs. We hadn't talked much about the customized training side of what FSI does, but that that is a part of what we do also. So we're able to work with you to develop a customized intervention that is bespoke to your organizational needs in order to help and to assist. So much more I could, could say. But um, uh, our information is there. Please feel free to drop us a line, um, uh, give us a speak, and um, we'll do what we can to continue to support uh, the industry and the development of human resources within the industry. Thank you very much, Davinia. Thank you very much, Derry. This has certainly been very enlightening, and I am excited about the potential of the BVI financial services industry and how we are going to grow the industry. I want to thank all the participants who stayed with us this morning and who've been on the line with us this morning. Uh, This has been another BVI Finance Breakfast Forum. I am Elise Donovan, and do have a pleasant day.